Let's go next. We're done with supervised learning. So supervised learning, what did we see? We uh, saw regression, classification. You need to train the model using both inputs and you know uh, their associated or corresponding labels or target outputs, and then test on a, on a separate hidden data set that only has the features or the um, <laughs> input data samples, okay? You're predicting the outputs. Now, for unsupervised learning, let's look at this case. So I'm going to make... Okay, so what do you guys see? Two clusters, two different groups, right? So how were you able to see that? So what I want you to do is like to step out of your body, observe yourself thinking, and tell me what did you do internally to say that there are two different groups right there based on what you decided. The distance. So there are Distance is one important keyword, but think more about it. Just, you know, try to figure out how you use the distance to find that there are two clusters. So if I do something like this, right? So I want you to think more about it. So what, which distance, the distance between what and what we, um, we use to, uh, find out that there are two different groups on this screen. First, it's quite simple, right? So looking those that the distance between points in the same group. So this is, you know, I looked at in this group, in this cluster, all of those are very <coughs> close together. And if I look at the second group and I compare the local distance, right? All of those are close together, but when I compare the global distance, I see that these are two different things, right? Because I can easily do this. If I do this, right? It's very different. So I should compare the distance between those, the interdistance. So there is the intradistance the distance between elements in the same group, how close am I to my neighbors, but also how far or close I am to other, you know, points on the other side, like in the other group. So this is the um, interdistance. So this is what you've done just, you know, very simply um, when looking at this, uh, at this scenario. Now, let's think about something uh, more interesting. What is the problem we're trying to solve, for example, in this case? Can you guys think about, think of something? So what can we possibly solve? So what is, what is the dot or the data point? What can it represent in this case? Think about it. Think about different things, okay? Values of pixels, maybe? Okay, can be values of pixels. Right, but give me some uh, concrete examples, right? Like objects, instances, like uh, not just very, um, you went very, how do I say, like it's very detailed, but you extracted what you talked about. Like uh, we're talking in general. So you're, you're grouping A and B, you're clustering uh, something. What are you doing? What can you possibly do in this scenario? So what do we have here? We only have, what do we know about the data? There are two groups, but uh, what we are looking at is just a data point. So data point, what is it, guys? Remember me, remind me, remind me. A data point is just a sample that is represented by what? A long feature vector, right? So here are, uh, we have one times D in this example, okay? So this long feature vector like all these points are uh, represented by the same piece of feature vector, but why some of them are uh, seem to belong to different groups? Can you think of a reason for that? 
So this is not classification Y. We don't have, for now, the labels of those guys are unseen. We cannot see them. We're not allowed to access them, okay? So think about a real world application where you can blend a problem into this case. This is my question. Yes? Location on a map. Location on a map. Like maybe you have two different states and you want to, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, cluster well, location on a map. Like the number of people, the density of people yes. in some locations. Like Karakoy and here. <laughs> okay, so anything else? So I was speaking. So uh -huh. I took a picture, a scenery, like there's sky and a long grass trail actually. Right. So grass is green and the sky is blue. So each pixel in this picture may represent a point in this uh, graph, mm -hmm. which is the green ones come closer mm -hmm. and the blue ones come closer in other part of this. So you're doing segmentation. Yes. This is nice. So you're separating two different parts of, of the image without using any label. So automatically you're trying to run an algorithm that tells you this is the sky and this is maybe uh, the land without having any label data. So you don't have any ground truth label data where someone has colored the sky and told you this is a sky to learn from. And, but this is, this, is, this is good. It's a hard problem to solve, okay? Because you're not relying on any supervision. You're going blind and try to figure out where the, where the sky is and where the uh, where object one is and object two, but you, you wouldn't necessarily know that this is the sky or this is a land, except if you do further analysis. Okay, any other scenarios? Yes? Maybe we can expand the location. Uh, if we can say that these are the average position, the average coordinates of the ducks in this campus, maybe we can say that there are two groups of ducks in this campus, and naturally they don't uh, go into each other's territories. And we right. can see a pattern here, so we can say there's a two groups of ducks in this country. Good. So, yeah, you can see a pattern. So here, basically, you might be clustering exactly the same thing. So the example he gave is you're, you're grouping two different things. So you want to somehow classify, but classify <laughs> without labels. Classifying <coughs> without labels, that's what we call clustering. So when you say clustering is learning without any supervision, so that does entail you're going blind, you're trying to just figure things out and put you know samples that are similar together. But classification always means it's supervised. So this is something to keep in mind. Now, what can this be? I'll give you another example. For example, uh, we might have a different uh, like different types of houses. Okay, so these are all of these can represent houses. Some houses would belong, uh, would have a different architecture if they're built in the in the in Alaska, right? And others might be like igloos, for example. Or others can be very normal, like if they're built, let's say here. So the arch we can we can cluster the same, um, try to identify the patterns or the, the subpopulation within this for the same object, okay? So we're dividing uh, our samples into subcategories. We're trying to identify, you know, the look at the density of the data, the way it's distributed in its space and say, okay, although all of these guys might represent the same object, for example, I don't know, like, um, ASD brains, and this there was a study uh, on clustering ASD uh, connectomic data or brain connectivity data, and they discovered that not all subjects are similar. There is the data is heterogeneous, which means when you perform clustering, you can see that some subjects they are more similar to others uh, than um, than the than other subjects. So the idea is if we can figure out this these heterogeneous patterns, we can figure out why some subjects cluster together, why you know this uh, patient belongs to this group and not the other group, right? We might devise some specific treatment. So figuring out or disentangling the heterogeneity of the data of the data, clustering it, ident identifying subpopulations might help solve many problems, but also give you insight into um, into your data distribution, okay? So we can try to solve classification problems by using clustering. How can we possibly do that? 
Okay, how, how can we evaluate that? Let's say you have an algorithm, like a magic algorithm, that will automatically uh, put points like cluster points or group points together based on some criteria, like let's say there is similarity. Okay, so this is group one, and this is another cluster. But you know what you have given to your, your, your image is uh, dogs and cats. Okay, now the algorithm, what it has output, what it will output is just the IDs. It will give you the IDs of the subjects that belong to cluster one and cluster two. Now I want you to think for a minute, how can I evaluate that my clustering algorithm performs well? <laughs> the distance, that's one thing, but there, there is more. So I want to know, uh, I want to use clustering but to classify dogs and cats. So when I train the algorithm, this is to keep in mind. So when we train a supervised learning algorithm, what do we guys use? We use both uh, samples and we use also the labels, right? But when we train an unsupervised learning algorithm, we only are allowed to use the samples, no labels at all. So we do something and we group them into two different clusters, okay? Group one, group two. Now, imagine that, which is usually the case for evaluation, that I have access to this knowledge, that I know the label of each point, okay? For example, here, I know that all these guys are crosses. And I know that all these guys right there are circles. Now, can I evaluate my clustering algorithm if I know the label? Yes, because you can see that in this case, you take the majority, quite simple, right? So you say that the majority label right here is a cross, so I'm going to label the whole cluster as a cross, so I made two mistakes, okay? And you can normalize it, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight points, and then you do the same for the other cluster. So somehow you can also use clustering to perform classification without any labels and you evaluate it, of course you need to evaluate it using the labels ultimately. And you can also use unsupervised learning for many, many other things. So this is just a single, very single, simple example.